In our latest quest to find out just how much difference the bike makes, we'll be racing two riders on two different machines to see the difference. We can have a super keen amateur rider on a super bike and an ex-pro racer on the cheapest bike we can find. Oh, he's <laughs> 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 Rookie error. This is Mark Westlake, a keen mountain biker who rides twice a week when he's not managing the content at GMBN. He's been riding seriously since the late 90s and ridden six races. An unknown fact about Mark is he used to be a sponsored trials rider and can even call Danny McCaskill a friend. Mark Westlake, who's that guy? The superbike that Mark is going to be riding today is my Newt Proof Giga carbon frame, custom build. You may have seen the video where I spec this out. It's a beautiful bike. It's got the full SRAM access transmission, all the lovely lightest and greatest gear. It's worth about six and a half thousand pounds, eight thousand dollars. So when it comes to super bikes, I think that's a bit of a bargain actually. So it's a 290, so 29 in front and rear, 170 mil of travel in the rear, 180 up front. Also some spank wheels and rather appropriately, Vittoria Mazza race enduro tires. It is a cracking bike that I expect is going to be very fast on this hillside today. The X-Pro for today is me. Uh, I've ridden since 1995. I've done about 200 races, 23 pro race wins. Does today count as a pro race? Might be able to up those numbers. I don't think it is a pro race. Uh, and my bike for today is the Rock Rider. Well, actually, it's the B-Twin Rock Rider 540S. S, I presume, stands for sport. The Rock Rider costs £160. According to the website, this bike is designed for mountain bikers who ride regularly at a moderate intensity who want a real thrill. That's me. Uh, I can't wait to ride it. Uh, in fact, I've ridden it about 50 meters already. And I would say, I wouldn't call it thrilling. I'd call it moderately terrifying. I haven't found the geometry trap for this bike, but it feels like it's got a very steep head angle and very narrow bars. And that is definitely thrilling. Some might say a bit scary, but it's got less than 120 mil of travel, it says on the shock. It's 27.5 wheels. Pluses are the brakes actually work. Minuses are everything else. Rookie error. Oh, it's just get past. Yeah, it's Well, it's not the best I've ever ridden.
Oh, both those runs weren't without incident. We had a crash, we had a mechanical, but we'll head back to Dirt Shed and we will dig in some of the data and some of the split times. All right, before we get into times, Mark, how did you enjoy riding that new proof giga? It was good, really enjoyed it. It was the first full 29 enduro bike I've really ridden, and so it was good to get some time on it and just, yeah, see, see just how good they are really. And how does it compare to your bike that you ride the rest of the time? Uh, it has some similarities to it, but definitely the 29 front and rear made a huge difference and just the overall level of components was really good. Fancy kit, you've got, you know, latest and greatest brakes, gears. How did that, did it feel good or do you think it was nice but you don't need it? Oh, the access, the yeah. access setup on it was amazingly good. I wasn't, I've never ridden that setup before. Yeah. And so to actually see what the new setup is like was, yeah, quite eye opening. Yeah. Just kept changing gear all the time, way more than normal, because it's just so easy just to kind of blip it and yeah, exactly. it just changes straight away. It was, Impressive. You're gonna have to get your checkbook out and up, do some upgrades. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, it seems that way. <laughs> okay, so I've, I've I've split the run into four sections. Start with the top, which is a kind of technical routine and the time. So Mark did it in 151, I did it in 149. So tight, not a lot in it. No, um, no. Moving on from there, it flattens out. So split two was uh, for the landing of this road gap into the fire roads. So we've got a flat section, then an uphill section. You smoked me there, you did a 144, I did a 355. Because I had a slight mechanical where I was kicking the front mech, I was wedging rocks into the front mech to try and get it to work. It's not exactly ideal. Um, I kind of, I compromised and I left it in the middle ring and it kind of worked. To be honest, I've, I've done quite a few of these videos on the cheaper bikes and this was not my favorite bike. The kind of the angles, um, you know, it just didn't fill me with confidence at all. The, the bars were really narrow. In fact, I'm riding on that bike I had Victoria Mazda tires, the same tires I ride on most bikes, and it felt like I had no grip. 27.5 wheels, I'm, I'm most of the time ride 29, but you know, anyway, I think that kind of shows in some of my times a bit. Next split was the fire road to the end of red, where you had this mishap. <laughs> Rookie error. And when I got there, there was a bit of turf laid out on the track, so I thought, oh, maybe something's gone wrong for Mark here. It certainly did, yeah. Uh, and it, well, you did a 101 with a crash, I did a 50 seconds. Um, how did it feel? It's hard, isn't it, when you've got to get back on the bike as quick as you can and you're blowing. Yeah, I mean, my excuse is that I had a bit of a cold going on. So I get the racer excuses, racer excuse in there straight away, but... By then you're three and a half minutes in, so you're burnt, you know, you're feeling it. Yeah, definitely, yeah, but the, again, I mean, the, the bike itself was very confidence inspiring. It just kind yeah. of soaked up all the kind of the horrible chundery rooty bits there. So it made life a lot easier for me at least. So. Even there's a couple of quite tight cores, does it feel different on a 29? Does it feel all right? It felt a little slower to turn, I think, because the, the frame size was kind of reasonably similar to my own bike. It kind yeah. of meant that it didn't feel like a super long enduro bike or anything. So it's quite nice to kind of get around there at least. Okay. Into the final split, which was basically a long, mellow blue trail to the finish. Quite long, yeah, a bit of pedaling. So you did it in a 143 and I did it in a 141. So on the sections where there was no mishap, so I beat you, but, but not by much, a couple of seconds in it. Kept you said you had, to, you had to overtake someone as well, so that could have cost you, you know. Well, I'll, I'll take that. It definitely cost me a lot of time on that section. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so, however, if we're doing the time from top to bottom, you, you smoked me. So you did it in six minute nineteen. I did it in eight minute fifteen, with a bit of kick in from Max. So, technically, I mean, you take the win. <laughs> I've got to give it to you. <laughs> um, so there we go. Um, does it make a difference to me? You know, I didn't really. I've got to say, I didn't really enjoy riding that bike. <sighs> I didn't want to take too many risks that day and I didn't really, but it still felt a bit sketchy. Whereas Mark, did you enjoy your run top to bottom? Certainly did, yeah. I mean, crash aside, it was, uh, yeah, it was just really good to get to ride such a good quality bike, basically. Well, there you go. You know, it doesn't make the massive difference when it comes to times, but maybe your level of enjoyment, depending on, you know, the right type of bike does make a difference. Let us know if you enjoyed the video and what you want to see next uh, in these sort of comparison videos down in the comments down below.